Hi, thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to be solving problem one from week two of the Invariant Summer Puzzle Competition. As always, I'll leave a link in the description below to the Facebook page of the Invariant where you can find out more details about the competition. Anyway, this is the problem for today. We want to find all polynomials P with integer coefficients such that there exists A and B natural numbers which are at least two, which are not necessarily distinct, such that for all n in the natural numbers, so for all positive integers n, p evaluated at a to the power of n is equal to b to the power of k for some integer k. So in other words, we want to find all polynomials p such that there exist these a and b, which are natural numbers at least two, such that when you plug in an, any power of a into p, you're going to get some power of b out. Okay, so if you want to have a go at this problem, pause the video now and give it a go for yourself, and I'm going to jump straight into a solution. Okay, so the way we're going to solve this problem is to firstly derive some necessary conditions on P and then from that what we'll do is show that those conditions are in fact sufficient and then that will solve our problem. So what we're going to do is suppose we have a P from the statement of the problem before, so it has these A and B positive integers at least two, such that P of any power of A is equal to some power of B. And then what we're going to do is just suppose that the degree of P is N. Now a standard property of any polynomial, not just these special polynomials, is that if you look at the ratio of p to the a, uh, p of a to the k plus one divided by p of a to the k, like this guy, like this thing here, and then take the limit as k goes to infinity of this thing here, this will always be a to the degree of the polynomial, so a to the n. Now the way to prove this is, you know, write out p of x in kind of expanded form, so just say p of x equals a n times x to the n, plus a n minus one times x to the n minus one, and so on, all the way down to a to the, a one to the times x, plus a naught, and then on the top and bottom you can divide by a to the k once you've done this, and then um, you'll notice that you're going to get a bunch of 1 over a to the k's, 1 over a to the 2 k's, and things like that, and those will tend to 0 as k goes to infinity, and all you'll be left off with is a to the n in the numerator. Okay, so the limit as k goes to infinity of this guy here is a to the n, but by the statement of the problem, we also know that this guy here is a power of b for any k, and this guy here is also a power of b for any k. So then, looking at the ratio of two powers of b, that's going to be b to some power, uh, where that power may be a negative integer. Um, but we can make this kind of clear by saying that for any k, <clears throat> like so, we have that p of a to the k plus 1 divided by p of a to the k is equal to b to the m, where m is some integer. But just to make it explicitly clear that this m here depends on k, I'm just going to put a little subscript k, like so. Okay, so for any k, p of a to the k plus 1 divided by p of a to the k is a power of b, where this, uh, well, b to the m, where this m here could be a negative integer. So in particular, this guy here, this right-hand side, b to the m k, is falling in this set here. So, so 1 over b squared, 1 over b, 1, b, b squared, and so on, like so. Just squeeze it in there. And obviously that's going off to infinity, and that's going off to infinity. Now, what we notice is that if we take the limit as k goes to infinity on this right-hand side here, so the limit as k goes to infinity of b to the mk, well, because this guy equals this guy, it's going to be the limit as k goes to infinity of this guy, but we've already shown that this guy here is a to the n. So we have the limit as k goes to infinity of b to the mk is just a to the n. But in particular, these b to the mk converge, and we know that a to the n is a positive number because a is at least 2, and n, I guess, is a non-negative integer. So this guy here is certainly going to be at least 1, so a positive number. So we know that this guy here converges to a positive number, but each of these terms here falls from within this set here. Now, the only way you can make elements in this set here converge, so if you find a, you know, to find a sequence of numbers with elements from this set here, the only way it can converge is A, if it converges to 0, in which case you're kind of looking at terms going off this side here. But that's not possible in this case because we know that a to the n is a positive number. Or um, the case where eventually your sequence of numbers is constant. So it, it eventually, for sufficiently large k, b to the power of mk is, efficiently con uh, is eventually constant. So that means that mk is eventually constant for sufficiently large k. So what we've deduced is because this guy converges, we know that there exists some, uh, let's call it uh, n, capital N, so there exists N such that for all k bigger than or equal to N, b to the mk is constant, so that's just equal to b to the m evaluated at N, ok? 
capital N. Okay, so there's a lot on the whiteboard. Hopefully this has all made sense. Let me clear up the whiteboard and we'll continue. Okay, so we just showed that P of A to the K plus one divided by P of A to the K is B to the M N for K being bigger than or equal to N. So in other words, this guy here is eventually constant for sufficiently large N, uh, sufficiently large K, sorry. But we know what this guy here converges to. This converges to A to the power of little N by the argument we had before. So in fact, we can just get rid of this right hand side here just write this as a to the little n, like so. So p of a to the k plus 1 divided by p of a to the k is eventually just the constant a to the n, so that's for sufficiently large k. Now what we're going to do is I claim, and it's not too difficult to prove this claim, is that um, p of a to the k is equal to, let me get this right, a to the n k minus n times p of a to the n, and this is for k being bigger than or equal to n, so I claim that this guy here holds, and you can prove this very quickly by induction just using this guy here. And the base case clearly is true, because when you plug in k equals capital N, this guy here just turns to 1. And then of course p of a to the n equals p of a to the n. And then just using induction and this guy here, you can prove this. So this guy here holds. Now what we're going to do is introduce the polynomial g of x. And g of x is just x to the n multiplied by this constant. And what is this constant, which I'm going to put in brackets? Well, it's going to be... Um, a to the minus n times capital N times P of A to the capital N, like so. So G of X is X to the N times this constant here. So G of X is certainly a polynomial, and we know P of X is a polynomial, but what we notice about G of X is that G of A to the power of K is just equal to, if I plug it in here, A to the N K times A to the minus N N, times p to the a capital n like so but this guy here is the exact same thing as this guy here um, obviously just bringing these two a terms together so and obviously g and p are both evaluated at a to the k here so what that tells us is and because these are both polynomials we have two polynomials p and g which agree at infinitely many points i guess i should say for k being bigger than or equal to n well in fact this holds for all k but yeah but for any k positive integer being bigger than or equal to n p and g are equal to each other at a to the k. Now what this means is because they're both polynomials, they must be the same. If you've not seen this result before, I'll quickly give you, just like by words, a quick sketch proof of that, but go through the details yourself. But uh, we have two polynomials which are equal at infinitely many points, and we want to show that those polynomials must be the same. Well, what we're going to do is look at their difference. So look at p minus g, and then we know that, that that's also going to be a polynomial because p and g are polynomials, so p minus g will certainly be a polynomial. And because p and g are equal at infinitely many points, then that means that p minus g will be zero at all of those points. And hence, p minus g will be zero at infinitely many points. p minus g is a polynomial. It's zero at infinitely many points. Hence, it must be the zero polynomial. So p minus g is a zero polynomial. So that must mean that p equals g. So we've got that p is g. And in particular, we have that then that p of x so a necessary condition for p of x is that it equals x to the n times a constant. So it's just like, it doesn't have these other terms after the x to the n, it's just x to the n times some number. Okay, what we're going to do is tweak this necessary condition ever so slightly, and then show that that is sufficient as well. Let me clean up the whiteboard, and I'll continue. Okay, so we've just done a necessary condition for p of x is that it takes this form here. So p of x must be of the form c times x to the n, where c is a constant. Now we can make this a little bit better. Well, we know from the statement of the problem that all the coefficients of p must be integers. So we must have then that c is an integer. But in fact, we can make this a little better. And I claim that c must also be positive. So c must be a positive integer. So I claim c must be a natural number, so a positive number. And let's just see why. Well, if c was less than or equal to 0, then we notice that p of a squared is just equal to c times a to the 2n. Now this guy here will be positive, a to the 2n, because it's some real number to an even power, so it's going to be positive, multiplied by c, but we're assuming c is less than or equal to 0. So this guy here is going to be less than or equal to 0. But we know that p of any power of a is equal to some power of b. So this is equal to b to some power, little m. So And we know that b is positive, so b to the power of m will certainly be positive. So we have that this guy here is positive. So we have a positive number equals a non-positive number, and that's certainly not possible. Okay, so that means that c cannot be uh, less than or equal to zero, 
So that must mean that C is a positive, onto, a positive integer and that proves my claim. Now this is the condition which I claim is necessary. Now let's quickly prove that it's sufficient as well. Okay, so I've just shown that it's necessary for P of X to take the form CX to the N where C is a positive integer and N is a, is a positive integer or zero. So a non-negative integer because of course we could be dealing with constant polynomials. I claim that this is also sufficient as well and the way I'm going to prove that is just split it into cases of c equals 1 and c not equal to 1. So if c equals 1, then of course p of x is just x to the n for some n. And then I claim that a equals b equals 2 is fine. Oh, a equals b equals 2 is, uh, you know, a, a sufficient choice for a and b. Because then p of a to any power, well if a is 2, this is just p of 2 to the k. Well this is just going to be 2 to the n k. Like so, and this is very clearly a power of b if b is equal to 2 as well. So the case c equals 1 is fine, and hopefully this is all very obvious. And if the case, for the case c does not equal 1, then that, of course, because c is a positive integer, means that c is at least 2. So this is the next case, I guess, c equals 2. And in this case, uh, we can simply just choose a equals b equals c, because then, of course, p of a to the k well, that will just be p of c to the k, because a equals b equals c. And then this guy here, because p of x, I guess, will be just cx to the n. This will just be c times c to the n k, which is just c, oh, sorry, c, ah, c of k raised to the n, which is just c of n k plus 1, c to the n k plus 1, sorry. And this is very clearly a power of b, because b equals c. And hence, this is very clearly a power of c. And that solves our problem. We've shown that if... P, oh, so we've shown that all the polynomials that satisfy the problem are of the form c times x to the n, where c is a positive integer and n is a non-negative integer. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this solution. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.